Yesterday, Speaker Pelosi dismissed any scrutiny of China. She actually said that uh, their actions, if we look at China, was a diversion. We all know that China lied to the world. 95% um, of this crisis would not have had to happen. It would have been contained in China from a study by Southampton. We know that China has leveraged their stockpile of personal protective equipment for their own personal gain. We now know that China is hacking our university and companies looking at vaccines. Could actually slow the process down and undermine our effort to solve the problem. Thousands are dead or sick, and millions more are out of work because of China. And Speaker Pelosi is so tone deaf that she just dismisses China as a diversion. As many of you know, for more than a year, I've been working with the Speaker trying to get a bipartisan committee to look into China's behavior long before this virus. She agreed, then backed away in February. And now she just calls it a diversion. Instead, she wants to focus on a liberal wish list. When you look at the past behavior of this Democratic majority, when the Intel Committee should have been looking at China, they were working on impeachment. When now the virus is upon us and we look what China is doing now, even over trying to steal our vaccine process, she calls it a diversion. But what we see on the floor today is the real diversion. Democrats' priorities continue to be on full display. For weeks now, we have encouraged them to open Congress back up, believing it's essential. I guess one of the few things on the Capitol that they think is essential is Starbucks. The Senate is working, but the House is not, and she's bringing us all back today for a vote that will go nowhere. Even her own party and her own members call it a political vote that will not become law. Why? Just look at what's in it. If you look what's in this bill today, in the CARES Act, it mentions cannabis more than jobs aims to change election law, suspends the cap on SALT deductions that really benefits directly millionaires and billionaires, provides millions of more dollars for an endowment for the arts and humanity, nothing to do with COVID. But before we even get to the vote on what they call the HEROES Act, Pelosi will now try to change 200 years of history on how Congress performs. Everyone knows at Congress that constituents lend their voice and their power to the members of Congress for every two years. Now they'll change that, where only 20 members of Congress will control it all, because they can all hold 10 proxies and pass whatever they want. She even goes further in dismissing the voice of the people by trampling on the Constitution. But what is worse about this is she continues to pay members of Congress not to work. She extends Congress to be out of session longer than the 45 days of just proxies. When will Congress ever come back? We work at the truck drivers, the delivery workers, the doctors. They're all working. But she continues to deny Congress to do the job. Inside her HEROES Act, which she continues to twist arms to try to get as many Democrats she can to vote for, the focus is on bills that they dreamed of before COVID even existed. This is not a time for politics. It's not a time for diversion. It's a time to put America on a better footing, to help us get a vaccine, not allow China to try to steal that as well, to hold China accountable for the actions that have taken place, and to get our economy working. And if you want to get our economy working, the first thing you would test on any bill that would have mentioned job more than it would mention cannabis. But that's not what we're viewing today. Because Pelosi wrote this bill herself. It's her own dream. From the liberal view of her party, with no input from either side, knowing that it's going nowhere, for the idea to bring people back and also to change the voting pattern of Congress that has been there for more than 200 years. It's a very sad day inside this house, and one that we cannot sit back and do nothing about. Let's open it up for questions. Yes, sir.
Mr. McCarthy, what do you make of Peter King's comment? He said he is going to be supporting Nancy Pelosi's $3 trillion package, and he told us that New York, will, New York the city, will die uh, without this package for state and local government. I would simply read, tell Peter to read through the bill, because this will not save New York. Um, it will not help the country itself. The one thing I would look to is what we've been able to pass already on the funding to New York. And if you look from this administration, what they've been able to provide, building of the hospitals, the ventilators and others, we are here for the states and others as they move through. We have given the states more than $500 billion in less than one month. We've increased the funding from uh, FMAP and others, and we'll continue to look and do more. But we'll make that decision based upon facts, not upon a wish list, not upon ideas that were created long before COVID was there. So um, to that, I disagree with him. Yes. Mr. What, no, I have not. What do you, what, so you want to wait, what, how long, what's your horizon? You want to wait, you know, you're not going to wait till December to see if the economy were No, I would not wait for December, but I would not pass a bill without having any hearings. Uh, from the standpoint, without any feedback, states are beginning to open up. We just passed $3 trillion already in a bipartisan manner that continues to have to be implemented. There are changes that I think to give more flexibility from the states, from the funding we provided them. I'd be supportive of that. We have the feds that have a more than $4 trillion to implement as well. Why don't you get the data back and make sure that's implemented correctly to look at it? Are you talking two months, or you, I mean, just give, give people a time? Well, I think Congress should be back in session right now looking at it. There wasn't one committee hearing on $3 trillion. And let's put that in perspective. This will be the largest bill in the history of the United States we have ever voted on. And not one hearing, not even input from committees or from people on the other side of the aisle are bicameral. And that's what we're voting on today. And in the same time that we vote on that, we're changing the power of Congress itself. That 20 people inside the House of Representatives will have all the power. The founders would be ashamed of today. This is not what they envisioned. This is not what they believed in. And this is not the action the American public believes. Does the speaker believe she should continue to pay members of Congress and keep them home? Does she believe that Congress is essential? If so, come back and hold hearings. Why would you decide to spend $3 trillion with no input? Maybe it's a diversion. I'm not sure. Yes. Um, Steve King was quoted this week saying that you told him he could be exonerated and get his committee assignments back. Can you clarify what's going on with Steve King? Yeah. Uh, Congressman King's comments cannot be exonerated, and I never said that. Um, committee assignments are decided by the steering committee, um, and he'll have the opportunity to make his case. Talking to members on the steering committee, I, I think he'd get the same answer that he got before. Last night, that he does anticipate another round of legislation will be needed. Do you agree with that? And when do you think bipartisan talks would start? I do believe in that. I do believe it have to be bipartisan. I do believe it have to go through committee. Well, as you know, um, myself along with Tom Cole and Rodney uh, Rodney Davis, we put out a plan to open Congress more than a month ago. Have committees working now. There are bills that need to get done. The NDAA national defense. Our appropriation bills, those committees could meet here now in Congress in large size rooms with social distancing so we could have that work done. At the same time, we could have committees gathering the data as states are opening and what's the need, getting the feedback from the states, looking at the implement, implementing of the bills that we have already passed from those three trillions along with the Fed's other four trillion dollars and realizing where more resources are needed or more flexibility needs to be given, and that legislation can move through committee and pass on the floor and go into the president. Everybody knows this is going nowhere. Pro-life organizations are really upset with this latest bill, relief bill, because it provides uh, federal funding for Planned Parenthood. Your reaction to that? That's another reason why people should vote against this bill. But remember, every time we worked on a bipartisan bill, Speaker Pelosi slowed it down. Why? because she wanted certain things in the bill. If you read the bill we're voting on today, those are in there. It takes away safeguards for small businesses when it comes to liability. 
It adds funding for Planned Parenthood. It adds funding for Ill illegals instead of Americans. It talks about cannabis. It talks about rele releasing from prison some of the most dangerous people that we know. This is the most liberal wish list that has nothing to do with COVID-19. Think of all the bills that they had produced prior to the virus coming. They wanted to change election law. It was their number one most important bill, H.R. 1. It's in here. That's why it didn't go through committee, because it never could be passed. That's why it's not bipartisan, because no one would support it. But why are we wasting our time on this when there's so many other essential bills that need to get taken up? Yes, sir. Uh, are you supporting Steve King's re-election bid? I have not taken a position on his race, no. Why is that? Because I have not. The, the people have the determination to decide who they want to vote for. You're a Republican incumbent. Typically, you support all Republicans. Yeah. The, the constituents have a decision to make, and they can make their own decision. Yes. Um, whether you're supporting Steve King's bid or, bid or not is to, to decide, but if he does win his primary and he does win the general election, will you give his, his uh, committees back? I mean, if, if he keeps winning re-election, will he not have committees? Um, if he wins re-election, he has the right to go to the steering committee, and the steering committee would take up uh, the committee assignments, just like every Congress, just like every single member. And that's the discussion that we had. And he had, I mean, just that I said, he had the right to go to the steering committee. I mean, apparently, if his constituents want him in Congress, shouldn't he have a committee? The constituents decide to put him in Congress. He is in Congress. Committees are decided by the um, steering committee, by the conference, just as every other member inside Congress, or on the Republican side. We have uh, some questions from uh, remote as well. Thank you. As a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please use the chat function directly with the moderator to share your name and outlet. There are currently no remote questions in the queue. Oh, all right. Well, pretty good. So are you all done? All right. Thank you all. Have a good day. Are you going to Camp David this weekend? Yes, I am. Can you get tested before you go? Yes, I've been tested um, twice last week and uh, once earlier this week, but I'll be tested again today. Can you What's on the agenda? Uh, there's quite a few things on the agenda. Like anything you'd like to tell us? <laughs> <about. laughs> Go on. We assumed it wasn't a one-issue thing. <laughs> what is on the agenda? One big issue. Well, we talk about a little of everything. I spoke to the president last night about a couple different issues. And, um, like what? <laughs> they were all good topics. Um, we, we have uh, a genre of um, ideas that up there. We talk about uh, the FISA bill. We talk about reopening our country, rebuilding it, the transition to greatness. Um, we also have the opportunity to talk about politics as well, why we're there, and we'll talk about that too, and races and others. So, all races. Well, I'm glad you brought up races uh, uh, for Congress, because we have not talked about that. Because something happened this week, which many of you should report about. We won two special elections. So when I was um, sworn in and took the role of um, minority leader, it was 19 seats for the Republicans to take the majority. Today, it's only 17. We won a seat in California that we have not flipped a Democrat seat in more than 22 years. It's a seat that they won by more than nine points, and we're ahead by 12 today. In the middle of COVID and in the middle of a situation that they want to make all elections a national election by all mail ballot, and they changed the rules of the election, and we still won. When you look at our candidate who's coming forth, they put their state rep up, um, their very favorite candidate. They put a lot of money in the primary and a lot of money in the general. They outspent us, and we still won. Mike Garcia is a first-generation American. Worked hard, earned, earned a place to go to um, the Naval Academy, nominated by Buck McKeon. Became a fighter pilot, served his country, and now is going to serve his country again and will be sworn in next week. There are 42 other seats that Democrats currently sit in that have a better opportunity for Republicans to win than the seat we just won Tuesday night. And what is Nancy Pelosi doing? Twisting the arms of the Democrats 
and forcing them to vote for a bill that's a liberal wish list that will not become law. If I was any one of those 42, not knowing when Nancy will ever call you back based upon what she's doing, but she'll still guarantee you a paycheck, she can only guarantee it for the rest of the year. Because I think the election is going to turn out much different. And that was an early sign. For those of you who love history, even in a short term of history, in May of 2010, there was a race in Hawaii. And people did not think any Republicans could win. And Charles Jiu got in, a veteran. And the young guns got behind him. And he won that race. Later on that year, 63 Democrats lost their seat. Nancy Pelosi said they would not lose and continued to put them up on bills that the American public did not care for. I'm not sure maybe this is just a diversion for an election, but what China has done is not a diversion. We do not want to make it partisan. We asked Democrats to work with us on the committee. They continue to decline. How do you look to in a week that is a national police officers? I want to honor them, the first responders. For her to say that it's a diversion for those that are being put out on the front line. It's offensive to every single American and to every person on this earth that she thinks China's a diversion after what they have done to this world. And I would think in this place, in this Congress, you would not shrink it where only 20 would have power. You would open it up and actually work towards making sure we have a vaccine that China cannot steal and making sure we hold them accountable for all that they have done. Hope you have a nice day.